This clip is brought to you by VegasWinners.com. Get expert sports betting advice from some of the best handicappers in the world. Head on over to VegasWinners.com and win yourself some money. Let's let's start at the beginning of Mid-South. I guess it really begins with Leroy McGurk as the NWA tri-state territory. He was covering Oklahoma, Louisiana, and Mississippi. Before we even discuss what NWI tri-state is, you got any memories of Leroy McGurk? I know he was Jim Ross's original mentor, if you will, but from your perspective, what was your experience, if any, with Leroy? I did not know Leroy. Didn't know Leroy. I knew of Leroy, and he was one of the great junior heavyweight champions of our time and a hell of an amateur wrestling. Based his territory on good, solid amateur wrestlers turned pro. It wasn't as big. Of course, he had him. Everybody had him, but he he wasn't as big on guys that didn't have any wrestling, real wrestling experience in his territory. He wanted tough guys, real wrestlers, so you can't see through it. Because, by God, in Oklahoma, they got to have real wrestlers. That's that's, that's what they got to have. They ain't going to buy this this sizzle and this bullshit. So Leroy was that type of a promoter. Bill worked for Leroy as Booker and also his top hand for many years. And his legend has it, and I don't know any of this to be true, so I'm reporting this as only rumor and innuendo and gossip, is that Bill stole the business from a blind man. That's what, Leroy was blind. That's what I wanted to talk about. How difficult... I mean, can you imagine how difficult it would be to run a wrestling business as a blind man? Obviously that's going to be an issue in, in any walk of life, no matter what got, you choose, but goodness. I got a better one for you. Okay. Leroy did color on the television shows, which is just crazy. When you think about it, that's a story that I think more people should celebrate in wrestling. Wouldn't yeah, you? Agree? It was. He would listen and he would listen to the commentator and the commentator would tell him basically who was on top. And then McGurk would go from there. It's just fascinating. Not everyone knew he was blind. And you never met him. Never met Leroy. No, I met his daughter, Mike. What did, what did Paul think of, of Leroy? Paul, he knew Leroy. I think that. He liked Leroy, but he definitely disagreed with the way that Leroy won, ran his territory. He wasn't really fond of the style and the talent that Leroy used at that time. Tell me about that. What do you mean specifically? For the most part, they were boring. So- Mike George, who is, uh, I'm sure, very, actually, from everything I've heard, an absolutely great guy. I never met Mike. But Mike George was on top there for a long time. Don't call me yellow. Buck Robley was in there. You know, Bill was in there. And they had some great talent in Bill Watts and Ernie Ladd and Ted DiBiase throughout the years. But they focused on the guys that could actually wrestle. And it was just a different philosophy. It was kind of, it was slow and more in the, Hey folks, this is real versus, Hey folks, we got a story to tell you. The great Mephisto just threw a fireball at Ivan Putsky. And it was a different philosophy and just geographically very close. And those in Beaumont, Port Arthur, they were getting the the mid South show from uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana. And they saw it and they, they had a hunger for it because that was during the time that they were starting to build this guy by the name of the junkyard dog. And that was after Bill had bought it, but somewhere in there. Yeah. Bill went in and bought the territory. Before we get to that, I want to ask as a kid where you lived, were you able to see the tri-state product at all? No, I got it from the, I got all their programs. Tom got all their programs. So we would keep up to date with everything that was going on there through their programs. And those were done through the guy in Minnesota, Norman Keitzer and Jim Melby. And 
when you're talking about the cowboy, I believe that Leroy really built NWA tri-state really around him. And, and he had mostly been splitting his time, you know, there and championship wrestling from Florida. But I guess what I'm trying to drive at, let's talk about Bill Watts as an in-ring performer. Why do you think McGurk built around him? Why was because he the Bill, guy? What's that? Why was he the guy? Bill was a huge man. He, he was a big man, tough guy, a legit background in football. And I believe he wrestled as well, but Bill had real credentials. And Bill had also been, he'd done his stint in New York and he had done his stint in Florida and Georgia and he also was, Louisiana, but his home was Tulsa. So he was big and he was believable. He was big and he was believable. Exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't believe this is real, but we not only got a handicapper, but we got the best ever. How are you so good at handicapping these games? Four and oh, that's quite a streak already. Let's talk about every pick I've given this year in the NFL, as an example, 23 and eight, every pick I've given this year, four weeks in the bag, 23 and eight. There's nobody in the country that can match what I do, but I always make sure because anybody Conrad could make up anything. They could tell you and blow smoke and tell you, oh, I'm the greatest, but I am independently monitored and documented. So nobody could ever question what I say and go, I don't believe it. I send every pick to an independent monitoring and documentation service that has to get the pick before the game goes off and then publishes it after the game goes off. So anybody could see what I gave, but this is the best start I've ever had. I've never been this good to start a season. You don't win every week, four weeks in a row, everything you put out. It's been the kind of year I've had. So get on a hot streak. Cause when a guy's on a hot streak like me, you want to ride it. I've always had a talent for picking winners. Never quite as hot as I am right now, but I've always been very good at it. And, and I think it's because I do more homework than anybody else. The average guy or gal watching this podcast, they, they don't have time. They have a career. They have jobs. They, they might read the newspaper or go online and see something, but they don't have time 80 hours a week to study the games. That's what I do. And I have a crew of guys behind me, my consultants, who every week we get together three times a week and they throw their ideas at me. I throw my ideas at them. And then I pick the final five plays on Saturday and Sunday in college and pro football. I've got a great team behind me too, but it's, we're all doing together hundreds of hours of homework. So you don't have to, it's all at vegaswinners.com. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to vegaswinners.com right now. Let's win some money. Let's talk about Paul because eventually Leroy gets involved with Paul in Houston. What do you remember of how that came to be? I don't remember Leroy getting involved with Paul in Houston in the eighties. He may have through the years, but just with the talent exchange, but nothing major. So Leroy just sort of winds it down. Is he in any sort of regular communication with Paul? No, no. Cause we didn't, we didn't work with that office that much. It was, I think that the feeling was it was too close that there would be a little bit of confusion in the marketplace. But then again, when dog got hot, JYD, when he got hot, it was like, how can you fucking not bring this guy in? What do you think Paul made of the way everything happened between Paul and Bill, not Paul and Bill, but Leroy and Bill, what do you think Paul made of that? Was he skeptical of what type of businessman bill would be, or did he just chalk it up to the rumor and innuendo? I think he just chalked it up to the rumor and innuendo. And you also have to look at the success that bill had afterwards. Yeah. Because bill came in and bill bought the territory and bill was a very aggressive promoter and bill made that territory successful. So you got to look at that and say, all right, well, maybe this guy's got something. It would have died under Leroy. You got to see a little bit, or at least hear a little bit about tri-state. And then of course you're going to get to see some mid South. What do you think the difference was like the way Leroy ran the territory? And then once bill gets his hands on it, 
he went in and changed what? The presentation. I think the bill made it a little bit, believe it or not, a little younger and hipper, even though it always, it wasn't always that way, but bill changed the attitude of the promotion from a staunch wrestling bill made a little bit more rough and tough and more story driven where everything had a story and it wasn't just about, even though some people would take you there at some point, you know, this 18 time all American and this guy won the Kentucky Derby in four and a half minutes and that kind of shit. It just didn't, He wanted stories. He wanted the guys to go out and work hard, be able to perform in the ring, but he had stories around him. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.